Hello and welcome to Time Tunnel TV. And on the show today we have one of Britain's most loved petrol heads. Yes, not mentioning Britain's tallest, as you can see. But first we are lucky to have Anna performing O'Hobed or Hillian, a nice Welsh ditty, and that's coming up for us right now. So let's take a listen, take it away, Anna. <laughs> Well done, Anna. We'll be hearing more from that young lady a little later on. Now, he's one of the best-selling authors in the UK. He's a top-selling col columnist with The Sun newspaper, and he's most famously known for that of Top Gear on BBC Two. But we're going to take him back to his sort of roots in South Yorkshire to the present day, so take a look at this VT. Worldwide saved a total of 344,000 eco-trees. What? And 659 tonnes of carbon dioxide has been reduced. What, what, what do they mean? What's an eco tree? What are you saying? We've got a kickstart, which is James's sort of thing. Am I in gear? Yes. What? Oh, no. Oh, so I thought you were taking it badly. Oh, my lord, that's terrible. How did you do that? Oh, that's awful. Oh, dear. Uh, oh, you just stuck it too far up your nose. You know, we are now the most northern people in the world. Apart from Michael Parkinson, obviously. <laughs> um, this, Ducati 1098. I'm sorry, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> it's a Ducati 1098. I'd like to put it forward to go on the board. In fact, I'd like to put it in the cool... I, I seriously know there's every reason why this is a very, very cool bike. It's an Italian superbike, but it isn't just technically very, very clever. It also looks... <laughs> percent have got jags you know what i mean eh? you've got a jag who here's got a jag you've got a jag look at him yeah he's a jag driver he goes away with a sort of girl for the weekend and then goes awfully sorry bit of an issue would with you mind awfully settling this <laughs> while i go and warm up the jag you know what i mean I think we might have overdone this well it could be worse could have come in the back of bobby charlton enough space in the boot for um, Ross Kemp. Um, so, Ross, you OK in there? A bit of a squeeze, but quite comfy. Quite comfy. Good. Good mark for Renault there. Do you think he's enjoying his first biking experience? I am the most miserable human being on... And my ingenious snow measuring tactic didn't go brilliantly. Wow! 
That's not hard, is it? <laughs> And this is crucial. A lot of people ask me this. Can you get Sienna Miller in the glove box? Well, let's find out. Sienna, are you, are you in there? Yeah. You are? Yeah. And are you comfortable? Very. Marvellous. Goodbye. Good mark for the Yeti there. This is Radio 1. Now, normally, that's like having a rusty screwdriver shoved into the side of your head. I don't know, today, it's fine. I mean, listen to this chap. He wants to bitch slap his hoe. Why not? I'm in gear now. This is a coach-built, hand-built car. Hand-built is just a, another way of saying the door will fall off. What's this called? Rolls-Royce Mulliner Park Ward. H.J. Mulliner Park Ward. It really? just sounds like a plumber's convention. And isn't the iPlayer brilliant? <laughs> well, when, when it freezes. <laughs> Broadband connection. Um, what I'd like to do is shove it up British Telecom's... <laughs> Start tonight with the aerial atom. Now, there is a new, much fa a a a a a a which has come along recently, and there was... No, you've got to lift it. No! Alan, you idiot, man! Honestly! <laughs> no, we're gonna do that. I dive down the inside. I'm in the lead! I'm not in the lead! I think mine's worked quite well. Yeah, not bad. Hurt like hell. Is mine all right, look? What is it? He's just having a moment. What does it say? <laughs> what? I have no idea what gear I'm in, and it won't engage neutral. Well done, Mr. Mole Husband. You're off. Oh, well. God! I hate this! There we go, a little introduction there to our friend Mr Jeremy Clarkson. So without further ado, a big round of applause. Put your hands together for Jeremy Clarkson, everybody. <laughs> Take yeah. a seat. Hi, how are you doing, Jeremy? It's a pleasure to be here. I today. hope we didn't get too uh, smoked out there at the back. Yeah, it's fine. OK, uh, you've been on our screens for quite a while now. Um, your humble beginnings, you started off writing for the Rotherham Advertiser, which, for those that don't know, is actually in Yorkshire. Yeah. And then you went to the Rochdale Observer, the Wolverhampton Express, uh, Lincolnshire Life. So you were basically a very small-time sort yeah. of journalist at the you, very beginning. You, know, you didn't go back early enough there, Graham. You want to go back to when I was growing up on the farm. I, the only vehicle I had access to was yeah. a tractor. A tractor? Yeah. So and that's where you learnt your... your uh, you introduced me right at the beginning as a petrol head, the original petrol head. Well... I'm converting to diesel. So you're a diesel yeah. head, you're not a petrol head. Yeah, I think so. Anymore. Yeah. So tell, before we go into your uh, sort of broadcasting life and your yeah. uh, sort of writing sort of bits and pieces, what was it like on the farm all those years on ago? On the farm, then? it was beautiful. I had the most beautiful upbringing, you couldn't believe it. Tractors, fantastic. I love them. So what drew you to a tractor then? I mean, was your dad a sort of throw you in at the deep end? And well, got you know, I could get up in the morning, I could jump onto that vehicle and I could go as fast as I like. The power, you wouldn't believe. It's so much grunt, you wouldn't believe it. So what were you like as a child at school growing up? Were you quite academic? You must have been fairly academic no, because no, of where I, you went, went into eventually. Not at all, no? not at all. No, I was one of the bottom kids. I was tall. I didn't get bullied because no. I was bigger than anyone else. But uh, no, I wasn't academic at all. No. I mean, you were quite outspoken as a child as well. Or was that yeah. something that came oh, into yeah. later life through being bullied, well, for instance? Well, because I was big, I could more or less say what I like, even to the teachers. <laughs> it was yeah. great. And that, that's the way it went. <laughs> that's the way it uh, went. So you left school um, yeah. in the late uh, in the early in the late sixties, yeah. early seventies, yeah. and you started writing for the Rotherham Advertiser. Um, okay. How did you get into the actually writing? Was that something through school, well, English as such? And one yeah, it was other? English at school. I, had a, I really got on very well with my English teacher, and he encouraged me a great deal. So yeah, I got into 
English and into cars at the same time, actually. I mean, first car. I mean, we are yeah. jumping all over the place here yeah. because obviously time is limited. What was the first car that well, you those, owned? Those, well, those early cars, the diesel cars, were rubbish back then. So my first car was actually a Morris Minor. Really? Yep, Wait. 1100. Yeah, and you had to crank start the front, you know, like that. Yeah, so, it, it. so in your, so uh, Morris, yeah. I mean, they're, they're a collector's item now. I mean, yeah. do you have any collectible yeah. cars yourself? Oh, yes, I, well, Which I love we'll the Jaguar. The Jaguar would be my favourite British car, really, especially now that it's owned by BMW. So, oh, yeah, I know, you have like to be a bit careful there. Yeah. But, uh, like I say, you got into television mm. um, in 1988, around the late 80s, and Top Gear became a top-selling sort of a uh, programme. I do believe now, in the year 2013, there's actually a six-year waiting list to actually get on that programme. So you've been with the programme now for the best part of 25 years. In fact, it's 25-year yeah. anniversary, isn't it? It's your gold uh, silver jubilee this year. Oh, I believe so. But I, I can't, where did you get that information about there being a six-year waiting list? I think you're making that up. Oh, no, no, definitely. There is so. There oh. is. Yeah, the BBC, there's a six-year waiting list to actually get on Top Gear. To be presenting, you know. No, to actually go on the, on the show. On. All the people that stand in the studio, yeah. there's a six-year waiting yeah, list because there's only so That's many incredible, people. incredible, isn't it? Well, it's like the question of sport. There used to be a yeah. four-year waiting list to get on that. Just and uh, Top Gear has now taken over amazing. the mantle as the most uh, watched one of those sad people that stands show. there and, and claps at the right time. That's and, basically and, all and it is. rules over me. It's great. I love it. But you have Six become years. really, really popular. I yeah. mean, from, okay. and you've written novels and you're very outspoken. Well, I'm just cashing in while I can because, you know, <laughs> I'm getting on a bit. You know, I have to retire at some point. I mean, I'm trying to be as hip as I can, but it's. I'm are you struggling. outspoken because you think it's what the public want, or do you generally yeah. oh, feel it's, it's as though things need what to the be public said? Want. I'm not. I'm deliberately not PC, deliberately, because I believe in free speech. I want to offend people up to a certain point, but I think it's good to do to offend people as long as I don't mean it. You know. I mean, as you say, you've grown up in the 60s and the 70s. I mean, when yeah. there was no such thing as political correctness. Absolutely. Well, I'm still I mean, in that. I'm still I in mean, the 60s I, and I 70s. I thoroughly agree with you. Do you think we've gone too far with this PC sort of mode that we, we sort of live in today? Do you think there's too many too rules, well, regulations? Well, there's a few dinosaurs around. I think it doesn't really matter. You know, the young people can be as politically correct as they want. But, you know, me, I'm, I'm going to be as I always was. I mean, that's half your yeah. sort of... Uh, you know why people like you because of this persona. outspoken sort of yeah. you know you're in the paper you'll make comments on things not just yeah. about obviously motor cars and such but you've got big things to say about well, the world at large yeah anyway I, I, most of it's a joke isn't it really i'm trying to be funny most of the time i'm trying to get people to laugh no none of that's really serious so how do you feel Top Gear has, has progressed in the past 25 years obviously it was a very small time sort well, of show yes. back in the 80s through the 90s and then in the last seven or eight years, it's just absolutely exploded with yeah, the stig and global, everything else, it? and it's gone absolutely. Yeah. What do you think of my performance on cars? It's good, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely amazing. I you mean, wouldn't know it was me, really. I wouldn't know it was you. Who it was? I, I had to scratch my head. I had to it look was. twice. Yeah, I had yeah. to actually oh, go I on the eye clear and make sure it did was I you. Did I appear? I, think I thought did. I was just the voice. You did. I think you made an appearance somewhere right at on the, the end. Line. Was it perhaps? Yeah. Okay. So uh, cars today. Okay. What's the worst car you actually? Well, the first one, my Morris Minor was absolutely crap. Oh, it was rubbish. Yeah. It was rubbish. It was cranking it up. It was phew, on a frosty morning. No joke. Warmed you up, though. Right. Yeah. Well, we're oh. going to come back to you very shortly, okay. uh, Jeremy. It's smashing talking to you. I could talk all day to you. Oh, great. But unfortunately, we have a show to run. So what we're going to do, we're going to go into a small ad break. We're going to have more music from Anna very shortly. Okay. We're going to be speaking more to Jeremy. So please join us on Time Tunnel for the second part of this intriguing show. Welcome back to Time Tunnel TV. As you may have already seen, we've had a very special guest on the show. Yes, Mr. Jeremy Clarkson, as well as another live performance from Anna. But first, let's take a moment to watch some VT of Jeremy's best and maybe worst bits from the first series of Top Gear. Check this out. Cool. Flight of 12 for Grey. Electric cars worldwide saved a total of 344,000 eco trees. What? and 659 tonnes of carbon dioxide has been reduced. What, what, what do they mean? What's an eco-tree? What are you saying? Go 
a kickstart, which is James's sort of thing. Am I in gear? Yes. What? Oh, no. Oh, sorry, I thought you were taking it badly. Oh, my Lord, that's terrible. How did you do that? Oh, that's awful. Oh, dear. Uh, or have you just stuck it too far up your nose? You know, we are now the most northern people in the world. Apart from Michael Parkinson, obviously. <laughs> um, this, Ducati 1098. I'm sorry, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> it's a Ducati 1098. I'd like to put it forward to go on the board. In fact, I'd like to put it in the cool... I, I seriously know there's every reason why this is a very, very cool bike. It's an Italian superbike, but it isn't just technically very, very clever. It also looks beautiful. percent have got jags you know what i mean don't you? you've got a jag who here's got a jag you've got a jag look at him yeah he's a jag driver. he goes away with a sort of girl for the weekend and then goes awfully sorry bit of an issue would with you the mind wallet. awfully settling this while i go and warm up the jag you know what i think we might have overdone this oh, it could be worse could have come in the back of bobby charlton enough space in the boot for um, Ross Kemp. Um, so, Ross, you OK in there? A bit of a squeeze, but quite comfy. Quite comfy. Good. Good mark for Renault there. Do you think he's enjoying his first biking experience? I am the most miserable human being on... And my ingenious snow measuring tactic didn't go brilliantly. Wow! That's not hard, is it? <laughs> but, and this is crucial, a lot of people ask me this. Can you get Sienna Miller in the glove box? Well, let's find out. Sienna, are you, are you in there? Yeah. You are, yeah. and are you comfortable? Very. Marvellous, goodbye. Good mark for the Yeti there. This is Radio One. Now, normally, that's like having a rusty screwdriver shoved into the side of your head. And I don't know, today, I think it's fine. I mean, listen to this chap. He wants to bitch slap his hoe. Why not? I'm in gear now. This is a coach-built, hand-built car. Hand-built is just a, another way of saying the door will fall off. What's this called? Rolls-Royce Mulliner Park Ward. A Shea Mulliner Park Ward. Isn't it just it? sounds like a plumber's convention. And isn't the eye player brilliant? <laughs> <laughs> well, when, when it freezes. <laughs> Broadband connection. Um, what I'd like to do is shove it up British Telecom's <laughs> Start tonight with the aerial atom. Now, there is a new, much fa a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a I think mine's work quite well. Yeah, not bad. Hurt like hell. Is mine all right, look? <laughs> what is it? He's just having a moment. What does it say? <laughs> what? I have no idea what gear I'm in, and it won't engage neutral. Mr. Mole husband, you're off. Oh, well, come on. Well, I think it's safe to say, here he is, using your catchphrase, Top Gear is the best job in the world. Now, you've travelled to most places and continents in the world there, Jeremy, but before we go into that, I'm going to uh, take you back to 2002 when the show was on the wane. Andy Willman, your best friend, one of your yes. best friends, actually 
reformatted, rescheduled it and rebuilt the whole thing and introduced James May and Richard Hammond as well. Where do you think you'd have been now only for that sort of... Oh, oh Graham, we were seriously in the doldrums then. I, I thought yeah. we were finished, actually. But thank goodness he put it together and, uh, well, if he hadn't have done that, I would have gone back to the old farm, back to the tractor. And my chickens. I mean, I do well, still yeah, keep we're, chickens. Well, we're yeah. coming on to the, the chickens yeah. now. Yeah. We'll talk about your co-presenters as well. Okay. But obviously you run ch you've got chickens and that. Have you got yeah. a, a little holding somewhere now? A holding? You... Yeah, I've got about 10 acres. Yeah. Yeah. And where's Hundreds that? of chickens. Hundreds of chickens. Yeah, I sell so the eggs. It's a nice little, uh, nice little learner for me, actually. So you'd be a farmer. Pension. You'd go into farming. Farming, Absolutely, would you? yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. is that what you'd like to do eventually anyway? I mean, you've still yeah, got well, plenty I've, of more. I've kept it going, to be honest, because after 2002, I was so worried about the future. Well, yeah. I didn't know Top Gear, gear was going to go straight, you know, atmospheric. Stratospheric. Stratospheric. Yeah, it went absolutely yeah, crackers, right didn't it? it? Yeah. And it's actually sold to many countries around the world absolutely. Australia, New Zealand, yeah. Africa, you name it, Top Gear is everywhere. And it's yeah. one of the mo biggest imports that the BBC has at the moment. It is. I yeah. mean, going back 10, 11 years, who would have thought that? It's unbelievable. Well, cars are all over the world, so it's not surprising, is it? I mean, it is. I mean, everyone's... Uh, do you, would you say it was more of a male-orientated thing, or do you think there's a lot more females oh, that well, are getting females, into sort of... Well, the females all tag along, of course, because they're, they're men are really into it, so they, that's how we get them in. It's only because their the men are interested. Really. So you think it's more, more male-orientated oh, still now? Absolutely, absolutely. And obviously... Uh, it's all the, testosterone, really. <laughs> well, it is, isn't it? I mean, it is, yeah. drive, I mean, you have the... Um, Top Gear Drive, don't you? People who drive around the tracks, so you can oh, be the right, quickest. Yeah. You're talking about we, Stig, aren't you? Yeah, yeah that was Stig, and yeah, we'll yeah. come on to Stig very, very shortly. Yeah. I mean, they've been going since you form, reformatted the programme back okay. in 2002. Yeah, I'll you take thought you'd you get that. people yeah. in there. Yeah. Uh, who's one of your most sort of, um, one of the worst drivers you've had on that track? Who would ah, you say was one think, of the worst? Think, oh. I mean, you've had oodles and oodles. It must yeah, have been over 500 of, oh, in the last 10 hundreds. years. Who was the worst? Let's think. Who could be the worst possible driver you can imagine I haven't got a clue guys I mean I've one of the, the one of the most uh, one of the one of the better drivers was JK from Jamiroquai now JK. he's got an absolute massive sort of uh, collection of cars Jamiroquai is that a film no Jamiroquai is the group okay sorry 1993 they came out and JK okay. is the main guy and he's a big petrol head okay. like yourself Chris Evans on Radio 2 he's another chap that okay tends yep. to really love his cars as well yeah. who would you like to have on the show if well, you had a choice well to be a winner in that, you really have to be a risk taker. Mm -hmm. You've got to take the corners faster than you think you can do it. Of course, yeah. That, that means you're taking a big risk because you, know, you might write the car off. Of course. Yeah. Going back to but my original question. Who then, would be... Yeah, dead or alive. If you could invite one guest, it could be absolutely anybody. If you, who would you like to see behind the wheel going mm. around that famous track? <laughs> who would you like? In, After in I think, should I choose someone who's going to be obviously funny or someone who really would win? Who do you think is could that do what well? Asking? Who would do Dead well? or alive? People who've not had on I the show someone... I think Boris Johnson would be fun. Yeah. But I don't think he'd win. No, I don't think he'd I think do he'd very be well. pretty careful, actually. Who would be a dangerous driver? <laughs> Harry Houdini, maybe? <laughs> Harry Houdini. Well, Harry Houdini. For, for those that don't uh, know, Harry Houdini was a famous sort of escapologist oh, from the late everyone knows 20th, that. Sure, uh, yeah, 19th yeah. century. Yeah. But it's funny how people don't remember these things. Anyway, going on to your... I can't um, think of anyone who would be really brilliant. No, sorry. No, it doesn't matter. You keep thinking, we'll come back to that question. Yeah. Right, Richard Hammond and James May. Yeah. How are they to work with? Obviously, you seem to gel like a little family. You, you know, you bounce off each okay. other. You've all got your own sort of strengths and weaknesses. But you yeah. all do really, really well. Who would you say is the most competitive out of yourself, James? Well, I think I, I'm probably the most irritating. I deliberately try to irritate James. And yeah. Well, both of them, really. But as long as they don't do the same back to me, not, not to the same extent, you know. I can take a certain amount of um, aggravation, but, you know, I give it, I heap it onto them more than they heap it onto me, put it that way, because I'm in charge. And it's how are show. the challenges? Yep. I, I mean, the challenges that you put, you, you go all over the world, don't yep. you, doing these challenges? Mm. I mean, who always wins these challenges? Who's the most competitive <laughs> once again? Well, we've got to share it out. It's a bit of a fix. Oh, you shouldn't, shouldn't say things like <laughs> no, that on shouldn't the say national that. television. <laughs> no, it's not a fix. No, no, no. No. Absolutely not. We try to make it, yeah, you've got to stick to a format. You've got to keep people interested. And that means we've got to alternate who's ahead throughout the race. So yeah. it changes, right? So by the time we get to the end, we usually flip a coin. It's got to be fair. I can't win them all. 
No. Because people wouldn't believe it. Well, you'd like to, wouldn't you? Yeah, I'd love of to. Of course, you'd most lo love to. Now, yeah. there's been a little bit of mysterious uh, sort of smoke around the Stig and who the Stig was and the who Stig. he wasn't. And he's changed in the last five years. They actually changed the Stig over, didn't they? Yeah, I think I mean, his beard grew so big he couldn't get the helmet well, on anymore. Were you aware of who the Stig was? Or was that kept oh, a, I always a completely knew guarded secret from you guys? Knew, Nobody yeah. in the audience, actually, the production it, it team. it was never just the one person. We had to make sure he was roughly the same size, but actually they weren't all male. He's got to be an accomplished driver as well. Amazing he couldn't that. have well, anybody there in some, there. Was some, I know some women who actually drive very dangerously, and they're the ones who take the risks, and they're the ones who can win. Right. So sometimes a stig was a woman. Stig, yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. But uh, on the roads today, do you, do you, what do you feel like it's like driving on the roads today? Do you think uh, ladies oh. have got a little more, um, you know, more adventurous right. no, in their well, driving? I prefer the roads to be mostly empty so I can sort of do what I like. But other than that, no. I no. I do you think it's a safer place now? I mean, I feel place. when I'm driving, it's, it's absolutely congested all the in time. The sense, isn't it? In the sense, it's safer because there's so much car, so many cars, you can't go more than sort of about 10 miles an hour in London. It's We're going to finish very, very soon. Yep. What's, your, what's the car you're driving at the moment? I drive, I drive a Mercedes. Mercedes? Yeah. Oh, German. An SK300. So how do you feel the German cars are against oh, the English cars now? Your Jaguars and your Land Rovers and what, oh, and what and such. Well, they've always been better, let's be honest. How about Japanese cars? We've not really mentioned they're, that. They're absolute... Uh, they are terrible cars, Japanese cars. I hate them. Oh, OK. Yeah, anyway, yeah. good luck with the rest of the series and your novel writing and everything else. And uh, we'll look forward to reading in the sun again very soon. Yeah. That's it. Well, thank you very much, Jeremy Clarkson. That is just about it for this uh, edition of Time Tunnel. I can safely say it's been a pleasure getting to know you. We'll talk in the green room a little later on. And we'll talk a little bit more about cars, I think, and chickens. Anyway, to take us out today, we've got Anna again playing a lovely rendition of the wonderful track written by uh, Ewan McCall, Kirsty's dad, if you remember that. And this, of course, was featured in Play Misty for Me with the Clint Eastwood. First time I ever I saw your face. Please keep tuned to the next Time Tunnel. See you soon. <laughs>